Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Valeria Pulignano and uh, I will kick off uh, this uh, webinar. First of all, let me thank all the participants um, who are here with us today. So today we will basically uh, present the result of a study that we have done in collaboration with the University of Oxford, um, Alessio Bertolini and uh, Mark Graham and all the team of Fair Work in Oxford uh, University. Uh, and is in fact a research on the uh, scoring or ratings of uh, platforms here in the Belgium context uh, that we have been uh, doing um, within the Center for Sociological Research where I work and where also the, the team, the Belgium team works, uh, which is the Center for Employment, Industrial Relations and Labor Market in Kyle Leuven. So as I said, today we are here to mark the release of this uh, first set of fair work ratings for Belgium, establishing a baseline on the country's platform economy that will update it on a yearly uh, basis. Um, well, let me first of all say a little bit of how we are going to um, structure the webinar. So uh, first of all, there will be the presentation of the report on the scoring of the uh, platform economy in the uh, Belgium context. Um, and then soon after, we will have a panel with some expert policymakers, but also researchers who have been uh, investigating a lot and doing a lot of work, great work on the platform economy in general at the European both and also national Belgium level. And then finally, we will uh, be glad to open the floor for questions. So please uh, uh, put your questions anyhow in the questions and uh, answer box, and we will try, in fact, to uh, reply to those uh, when time will be. Um, so let's start now. So as I said, um, next slide, please. So as I said, we have evaluated uh, five uh, platforms in the food delivery, care and domestic service sectors against the five principles of fair work and given also them a score out of 10 based on the quality of work that they provide. Now, we do hope that this course will raise awareness of the conditions of gig workers in Belgium and also assist not only workers, but also consumers and regulators in making platform accountable for their practices and also help create a world of fair platform work. We are particularly grateful to the European Research Council uh, and the Respect Me project under the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme, and also the Flemish Research Council, FWO, for their own uh, financial support, which made possible, in fact, the collection of the data on which this research is uh, based. Now, um, let me start by saying a little bit about the FAIR uh, work project and the network overall. Now, the FAIR work project evaluates the working conditions of digital platforms and ranks them on how well they do. Now, FAIR work is uh, committed to highlighting best and worst labor practices in the platform economy. And our goal is basically uh, to show that better and fairer jobs are possible in the platform uh, economy. Now, the FAIR work project, as you can see here from this uh, slide, is quite large and it clusters a lot of countries in different parts of the world. And this has uh, expanded its research activities these last years. Um, we moved uh, uh, since the last year to 26 uh, countries uh, since 2019, if I don't make mistake, that they, changed, they uh, joined the, the network. And uh, um, two years ago, we just, uh, you know, uh, uh, led also fair uh, uh, lending in, in Belgium. And as I said before, um, you know, we at the uh, research group on employment, industrial relations and labor market at the CESO in Kyle Leuven, together with the Oxford um, Internet Institute at the University of Oxford, we have implemented, in fact, the fair work rating schemes in Belgium for the first uh, for the first time. Now, on the base of what we have been doing that, and here we move into the fair or five fair work principles which underpin uh, our work. Now, as you can see from these slides, um, these principles are um, conceived as the basic tenets of work that must be fulfilled for platform work to be uh, categorized as uh, fair. 
Now, these principles are in close collaboration with uh, um, taken in close collaboration with workers, and they have been, in fact, developed in close collaboration with workers during sessions at the international labor organizations. Now, these principles are uh, very uh, clear. We talk about fair pay, we talk about fair conditions, we talk about fair contracts, fair management, and fair representation. Well, in much more detail, uh, fair pay means, in fact, that workers, irrespective of their employment classification, should earn a decent income in their home jurisdiction after taking account of work-related costs and active hours worked. In terms of fair conditions, here we refer particularly to the policies the platforms put in practice, uh, if uh, uh, anyhow, in terms of protecting workers from the risk that they uh, encounter um, during the processes of work. Then we have fair contracts, which deals particularly with terms and conditions, which should be in fact transparent, concise, and always accessible to workers. And then finally, fair management and fair representation. In terms of fair management, we refer here to the uh, documented uh, process for decisions uh, making affecting workers. So in other words, workers should actually be informed about this. And fair representation means, in fact, the platform should provide a documented process through which worker voice can be expressed. Um, so de facto, these five uh, fair work principles uh, form the basis for how we have scored uh, the platforms that we have been investigating. And here, perhaps we can move to the next slide. So as you can see from the slide, each fair work principle has been broken down into two points, a basic point and a more advanced point that can only be awarded if the basic point has been previously fulfilled. Now here we see that every platform normally receives a score out of 10 and platforms are only given a point when they can satisfactorily demonstrate the implementations of the five uh, principles. Now, I want also to stress that failing to achieve a point does not necessarily mean that a platform does not comply with the principle in question. It simply, me simply means that we were unable also to evidence its compliance when these, in fact, uh, it is uh, you know, uh, demonstrated and it is uh, the case. Now, let me move now into the next slide and trying to get some clue about the kind of methods that we have used for our data collection. Now, as you can see here, uh, we have calculated our score, but how we have calculated our score is, in fact, based on these important, uh, you know, uh, data collection uh, process. Uh, basically, the Fair Work Project uses three approaches uh, to effectively measure fairness at work. And um, here I want to stress, and I will go back to this point, that we do not measure job satisfaction, but rather we measure the upholding of basic labor standards for workers. The reason being that job satisfaction, as research shows, is also very much affected and influenced by contingencies and situations which workers and different actors experiences. For example, during a period of recession, a period of COVID, as we have been, you know, kind of uh, 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 having, uh, and still we are uh, busy with the uh, uh, issue of the pandemic and not only. So for us, you know, the only more subjective way to assess all these is in fact, to look at the way in which and how, if any, uh, platforms, in fact, they take into account the basic labor standards, which are, in fact, existing up there. Now, the process is very simple. We have been, uh, you know, starting doing desk research, uh, which is, in fact, when the process starts. Um, and uh, it, the desk research has been aimed at uh, looking at which platforms are operating in each city, as well as uh, noting the largest and most influential ones and taking information of notes to the scoring processes. Then we moved into the interview process, uh, the field work, uh, by in fact having interviews with both 
uh, platforms, managers, and workers. And the way here is very simple. I mean, for us, uh, you know, we uh, interviewed platform managers and requested to them evidence for each of the fair work principles, because this is very important in order to also assess and measure and give a score. And secondly, of course, this has to be done in the light of what workers have been experiencing at the, uh, uh, you know, in the field. So we have also interviewed uh, uh, platform workers directly. Normally, uh, we aimed, uh, for a sample of between six and 14 workers interviews for each platform. Now, I have to say that these interviews do not aim to build a representative sample, of course, uh, but they instead seek to in understand the process of work and the ways it is carried out and uh, uh, managed. And then we moved in putting all these things uh, well together. So the objectivity of the research and the, rigor, the rigorous research that we do uh, have in this uh, piece of work is guaranteed, in fact, by this rigorous process of data collection, which includes all these different um, steps I've been uh, indicating, and also, on top of it, by a peer-reviewed scoring process, where the scores for each platform have been peer-reviewed by the country team, by the Oxford team, by two reviewers from other fair work country teams. And to avoid a kind of response bias, we have complied to the Kyle Leuven ethical standards of the research project, which means to recruit our workers, not via platform management, but by contacting them directly so that that could speak freely and anonymously about their own work. So um, the Fair work scoring reflects uh, the fact, so, as I said before, in this way, whether or not platforms guarantee certain minimum threshold for their own uh, workers. And um, I think that we have done it in a kind of very uh, um, sort of um, transparent and also very um, kind of objective, um, objective way. Um, now, uh, we also take uh, into consideration and we uh, appreciate the fact that, and this, you know, in the meantime, we'll, within a couple of minutes, we'll present the scoring. But we want also to say here that we really do appreciate that several workers uh, on platforms, uh, they enjoy, of course, the, the kind of freedom and, uh, and flexibility that platforms work entails. Um, however, we do also see that um, these shouldn't come at the trade-off of guaranteeing minimum standards, as I said before, as being the, the kind of principles, objective principles of our research. And also, you know, uh, in this way, not um, or taking into consideration the responsibilities of platforms vis-a-vis -vis, uh, their, uh, their own workers. Okay, next slide, please. So I will now move into some, uh, you know, indication of the findings um, before we move into the scoring. So let me give a bit of uh, context about the Belgium um, economy. Um, well, first of all, uh, as you can see from this slide, unfortunately, the Belgium context is one of the uh, uh, few contexts that in, uh, in Europe lacks recent representative data on the numbers and composition of the platform work workforce. So a lot needs to be done here still. However, uh, this particularly, I would say, if we compare with other uh, uh, countries, not only in Europe, of course, like for example, the UK, where we see in fact that we have much more you know, extensive data we can rely on, but nevertheless, in the light of the existing data, what we can see is that there is a limited size of the Belgian platform economy. Um, and uh, also what we see is that one key feature of the platform economy in Belgium is that the heterogeneity of the work and also of the workforce which operates in there. Now, when we talk about heterogeneity here, we mean not only uh, if you like, the different composition of people, uh, social groups, they work on platform work, uh, depending on the age cohort, the gender and whatsoever. But also we refer here to the kind of um, uh, uh, dependency, for example, that you know workers might have on the income of one platform or different platforms, but also the different sectors. And here you can see uh, from the slide, um, you know, a kind of representation of the uh, sectors which are in fact 
much more uh, prevalent in the platform economy in Belgium, particularly transport and food delivery services. Uh, they are the most uh, uh, represented, but also, uh, although not as much as represented as the transport and food delivery, other sectors like the, um, the care are also quite important. And this is also where our research tried to uh, shed light on, since also the fact that sometimes this is a sector which is a bit forgotten in the research uh, on platform work. Uh, next slide, please. Regarding the legal context, I think, uh, uh, and you know, uh, that, uh, and this is something that we share into our team in Belgium, we really are very pleased that we have been able to carry on our research in this upon this time, because, as you know, the 15th of February 2021, the Belgium um, context has been, uh, you know, there was this kind of labor deal, which was launched by the Belgium government, which tried to a certain extent to introduce some criteria uh, to determine status and also to extending law, particularly in terms of, uh, um, you know, protection for protection for workers on, uh, against accident, uh, work accident. Um, and therefore, you know, uh, for us, it was very important to try to see what, uh, what was um, uh, evident in the interviews we had done with workers regarding, you know, what we learned from these interviews that could give some sort of adding uh, and value uh, to this uh, labor deal. Now, what we see here uh, particularly is that, um, you know, one element we see as being still a gap, um, even in the light of the labor deal, is the fact that, um, you know, there is a, a bunch of um, so-called peer-to-peer workers working in the platform economy uh, in Belgium, which represent almost between 80-85% of the workforce in platforms such as, for example, RingTwice and Deliveroo, which have been two of the platforms we have been scoring, um, which de facto, uh, uh, you know, are not uh, able uh, to benefit of the uh, kind of this uh, uh, criteria and protection, um, uh, sadly, which are, uh, you know, aimed to be uh, enforced by the labor deal. Um, we also see here that there are, there are also, there is a bench of platform workers uh, which comes out from our research, so-called undeclared platform workers, so people that they just jump in, do their own work, uh, they don't, uh, you know, really declare their own income, um, so they are basically out of the scope of any sort of taxation. And again, this is a bunch of workers which is not taken into consideration and cannot be covered by the uh, principles of this deal. So, um, in the uh, research and in the scoring which will follow, um, we do hope that we will be able to um, reflect the regulatory gaps that still are possibly uh, needed to be uh, covered uh, in the Belgium context. And I give now the floor to uh, Milena Frank and Claudia Marat that will present the scoring of uh, this platform. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, we will now have a look at the different platforms and uh, the way we scored them based on the principles, the Fairwick principles and the Fairwick methodology that Valeria just presented. So in our sample, uh, the highest scoring platform uh, was Takeaway. Uh, Takeaway is a food delivery platform and it provides um, we uh, a, and I mean, it, and it hires workers as employees, either directly through the platform or uh, by going uh, through a temporary employment agencies. And Takeaway provides an uh, hourly minimum pay to its workers. So that means that uh, the Takeaway workers, um, regardless of how many orders, uh, food delivery orders they deliver per hour, they, they are paid for their working time. And um, uh, takeaway also covers the, the work-related costs for them. So there was uh, one port avoid, awarded for the fair pay. Uh, takeaway is also the, the only platform in our sample that was awarded both points uh, regarding the fair conditions principle. Um, so takeaway mitigates uh, task-specific risks because it provides a comprehensive insurance that covers workers against material and uh, physical risks while they're working and takeaway also provides them with safety equipment such as helmets. Um, 
And then uh, Takeaway also provides an effective safety net, um, provides holiday uh, pay, it provides sickness pay. So workers are protected um, against uh, income loss when they're not able, able to work. Um, regarding fair contracts, um, we also awarded uh, uh, points here because um, takeaway workers are employees, so they work under standard uh, Belgian uh, employment contracts. These contracts are accessible to them at all times, and uh, they make sure that the risks and the liability of engaging in the work are shared uh, between the platform and the worker who is undertaking the work. Um, yeah, finally, regarding uh, fair management, there was, uh, we also wanted to point to takeaway. So um, takeaway workers have multiple channels, channels to, uh, to enter into contact with the, the platform management. So uh, they can do so, so through their apps uh, or through a dig digital channel, but they also meet face-to-face uh, -face, um, platform uh, middle range managers when they go to their work. And uh, Moreover, uh, Takeaway does have a formalized process uh, for workers to appeal decisions made by the platform. That's also contributing to the fair management principle here. So, um, for example, when they're deactivated, there is a formalized process uh, through which they can appeal against this deactivation. Uh, so we didn't find, uh, uh, we were not able to evidence the existence of an anti-discrimination policy or of a mechanism uh, for the expression of uh, collective worker voice. So that's why takeaway wasn't awarded these points. Um, yeah, moving on to the second uh, platform, Ring Trice. Uh, Ring Trice was formerly known as List Minute. So maybe uh, for the Belgian audience, um, this uh, the name List Minute still rings the name, but they changed the name to Ring Trice recently. And this is a platform for uh, domestic uh, services. Um, Ring Trice offers a very, very broad range of services as diverse as babysitting, hairdressing, um, yeah, uh, uh, cleaning, uh, repairing things at home, etc. And um, in contrast to takeaway, Ring Trice workers are either peer-to-peer -peer or self-employed workers. Maybe I have to say something about these peer-to-peer uh, -peer workers. Um, that's because it might not be clear to all of you. So it's um, a peer -to -peer, uh, the peer-to-peer, so-called peer-to-peer status was created by a, um, a law in 2018. And it basically allows uh, platforms to, to hire workers while they're exempt from social security contributions and they don't have to pay uh, um, until 2021, they didn't have to pay taxes um, up until 6,400 euros uh, per month, uh, per year, sorry. Um, but then a tax uh, threshold of 10.7% of was introduced for them. Um, but so it's only up until 6,400 euros uh, per year. So very uh, low earnings from, from platform work in general. Um, but so this constitutes a large part of the workforce in Ring Trice uh, and in Deliveroo as well. Um, yeah, so um, the Ring Trice workers, when they go to the platform, uh, they, uh, they, they ask for, for a pay for their work and they ask for the reimbursement of, of any um, work-related costs they might have, such as costs um, incurred in buying some material, they need to execute the work. And uh, the platform puts a minimum threshold uh, that is different for each job category uh, that workers can't undercut uh, when they insert their pay and are paid by clients uh, on the platform. Um, Ring Twice also provides an insurance for workers, but we found that it was not uh, comprehensive enough to award the, the fair conditions um, points especially because not all workers are covered. It's only covering peer-to-peer -peer workers, not the self-employed. And also because um, the, the insurance as such is not comprehensive enough so that many workers we interviewed felt that they were still subject to much risk um, when they were carrying out the work. Okay, uh, regarding fair, <clears throat> sorry, regarding the fair contracts, we also awarded the point there. Um, 
because uh, there are very clear terms and conditions on the website, Ring Price also obliged clients to um, provide a very comprehensive task description to uh, for hiring workers. Um, but uh, yeah, we still find that Ring Price workers have to uh, shoulder a disproportionate amount of the risks uh, and liability when they engage in their work. So that's why we didn't award the second point for the fair contracts principle. And then, yes, we finally, for this platform, we awarded points for the fair management principle. Um, so uh, we find that there is a formalized appeal process on the Ring Twice platform. Um, there is also multiple channels to contact the platform. Again, uh, they, can, they can have face-to-face -face meetings, but also uh, online meetings, Zoom meetings, or um, so they, they also have a contact person among the platform management, the Ring Twice workers. Um, so, uh, and in addition to that, um, Ring Twice has introduced an anti-discrimination policy and has communicated this policy to all workers. Um, wow. This was all for, for Ring Twice. Um, maybe I can say just a few more words about the last platform that was awarded one point within our scoring, uh, which is uh, Deliveroo. So uh, again, a food delivery platform and uh, using these uh, peer-to-peer statues and uh, self-employed uh, workers. And um, so uh, while we were not able to evidence uh, a guaranteed minimum pay after costs and an insurance that's comprehensive enough to, to cover all risks workers are facing, we were able to award a, a point regarding fair contracts uh, because um, there are clear and transparent terms and conditions and the contract is available to workers at all times. Um, I will leave it for here for my colleague, Claudia. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Milena, and thank you, Valeria, for uh, the presentation so far and for presenting the results. Uh, we can move to the... No, sorry. I'll, uh, I'll stay here because I'll uh, just briefly touch upon the last two um, platforms that you see in the um, in the um, in the in the table uh, displayed on the on the slide. Um, Top Help and UPS are two uh, care platforms, what we call care platforms, although they do not solely provide services. Um, related with personal care, but also household services, for example, um, to which we uh, weren't able to award uh, any point based on the uh, empirical data we collected. And in this case, the empirical data uh, most really relate to um, interview data with workers and uh, desk research there, including the surveying of all the contracts that are available on their websites, because unfortunately we weren't able to engage uh, in conversation with the uh, platform management. Um, we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the care platforms were also a bit our um, team in focus in the report, as you will find uh, once uh, taking a look at the whole report. Um, we find indeed uh, interesting findings uh, when it comes to the way uh, these um, these platforms enter um, the market of like the broad market of care and household services. Um, well, let me say for, first for those who are not familiar with this uh, sorts of uh, companies or platform companies, um, the services that are provided on the platforms. Um, are very uh, diverse and range from babysitting to gardening and all sorts of household um, tasks and also um, private tutoring, for example. Um, these, of course, means that the set of occupations covered within the platforms are multiple. And in a country like Belgium, which has pretty well set uh, regulatory framework for each occupation, um, every occupation would fall into specific regulations, except as you all can also see from the, from the slide, for two uh, outliers such as babysitting and private tutoring, but otherwise for all the others, there are specific regulations in place. Now, when platforms get in the market, um, they challenge in a way these existing regulations because they just set the intermediation between the client and the worker. Um, this makes it in a way that, for example, uh, there is in the end what we have found is really non-compliance with the voucher system and for the Belgian uh, audience you may be familiar with the voucher systems when it comes to uh, uh, all sorts of household tasks. 
Um, but another case is, for instance, um, the care of like personal care of dependent relatives of um, of the elderly, which in Belgium is provided uh, by organizations. Uh, there can be nonprofit organizations or semi-public organizations, and workers are usually under uh, employment standard employment contracts. Um, so the um, the result of uh, um, of this mismatch, let's say, is of this avoidance of existing local reg national regulation, is that informal work is uh, receives a boost um, uh, when it's mediated uh, on these platforms. Uh, because workers and clients are left um, to arrange their own work and in the greatest majority of cases uh, ends up being informal. So no employment contracts are stipulated between the parties with very clear and negative um, working uh, impacts on working conditions of the workers who perform these tasks. Um, not receiving an employment contract, these workers are clearly in a position of vulnerability, um, which makes them uh, more, um, well, vulnerable to receiving low pay. Uh, low pay that don't, doesn't, not, doesn't comply with the national minima, usually uh, set by collective agreements. Uh, in some harsh cases, if they're even confronted with non outright non-payment. Um, and they are, of course, um, set in a situation where they need to, um, to provide for, to look for jobs uh, in order to secure decent income uh, and stable income. And um, last, but of course, extremely relevant, not being covered by an employment contract also means that these workers have no access to a, a social security and all the entitlements that in a country like Belgium uh, this entail. Um, I think we can uh, close here the presentation. Thank you very much. I'll give it back to uh, Valeria for the panel. Thank you very much, Claudia and Milena. So I think I will um, now start uh, the panel with the panelists. I would like to introduce the panelists to the audience. So let me start from um, Anna, Anna Bancic. Uh, she's deputy head of unit Future of Work, Youth Employment in the European Commission, Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Um, she has an academic background in sociology and psychology and also a lot of professional experience as a researcher and HR management specialist. Uh, and uh, Anna has been uh, basically um, focusing on policy development and evaluation in the area of working conditions and occupational safety and health. And in her current position, she works on topics which are really very closely related to the digitalization and new forms of work and work organizations uh, in platform uh, economy. So we are really very uh, grateful to have Anna with us today. And then um, I will move into um, Marty, Marty Willems. Uh, he's the national head of United uh, Freelancers of the ICV, uh, CSV, a trade unions for freelancers and platform workers. Um, and of course, is one of the most important, I think, uh, um, figure who has been uh, really uh, closely uh, uh, kind of uh, looking and watching at the situation of platform work in the Belgium context. So we are really very much also here grateful to Martin uh, to be uh, able to be with us today. And um, then uh, moving into Mark uh, Bottega from the uh, MEP uh, European Parliament since 2019. And um, for the uh, is part of the parliamentary group, the left, and he sits in particular in the European Parliament's Industry, Research and Energy uh, Committee and in the Employment and Social Affairs Committee, so also very much close to the issue of um, work and platform work in particular. And last but not least, Kurt Van Dale is a senior researcher at the European Trade Union Institute in Brussels. Kurt has been doing a great job and a large research in the platform economy. His research includes different uh, sorts of topics from workers' resistance, collective actions, trade union revitalization, and of course, also the context of the platform economy. So thank you very much to all our, our panelists to be with us today.
Um, well, I would like perhaps to start um, with the first round of, of question um, to all our panelists asking some reflections uh, based on our report. What do they, what do they take as a take home uh, message from our report and, uh, you know, any kind of comments that they might have uh, based on the report will be very valuable for us. So I would perhaps start from um, Martin. Hello. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, um, thank you for the uh, for the report. Thank you for the uh, for the for the survey. Um, well, personally, uh, I I find it a, a very good uh, idea uh, to to tackle the the issue this way. So to uh, to organize a rating of uh, platforms, um, I I I, I, uh, I surely. Uh, share the idea that the platform is not like another one. I, I mean, um, the platform is not a problem in search. Uh, what could be a problem is wh when you when you begin saying, okay, because I am a platform, I don't have to respect the rules. Uh, because I am a platform, I begin with what, what is called uberization, bad statuses and so on. So it's very important with those ratings to say, okay, a platform could be a good uh, working uh, conditions. Uh, I think it's also uh, useful for us to uh, to compare, to be able to compare the same platform between countries. Uh, maybe it's possible that one platform in one country scores a, a, a five and in another country scores a three. So why? Uh, uh, th th there may be reasons for that, for that, and uh, that, that's uh, that's very useful. It's also useful. It will be useful for us to communicate uh, to the workers. Um, uh, it's very it's very simple. Uh, just uh, uh, with just uh, ratings, uh, it's easy to 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 get a, a, a view for the workers or uh, what what is uh, where it is, it's better to to, to work. And um, the fact that you intend to review it every every year. Uh, is for me very important. Uh, it means that uh, we could see uh, possible progress. Um, and naturally, that's the, the purpose of everybody, that the working conditions are, are becoming better uh, where they are, they are not at the moment. So um, with this, uh, lo looking at the evolution of the rating can, 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 can be useful to measure and to, to, uh, to, to highlight this progress. Uh, I noticed that the, the platform are uh, willing to speak with you, maybe not at the beginning, but you said uh, in the last days, the platform, um, they, they try to show uh, how it's working. And uh, so, so maybe this rating could, could be a good uh, uh, incentive for platform to uh, improve the working condition. Now, uh, naturally, uh, you have the, the default of the simplicity. Um, some, sometimes, <laughs> I, I think it, it could be over simplistic. Um, and uh, you know where we, we exchanged this uh, yesterday and this afternoon and I have this, uh, this, uh, this issue with the, uh, the, the comparison of a fair pair between uh, the ring twice and take it easy. Um, in fact, I understand actually take it easy doesn't get the two points because there are problems by uh, take, it, take it easy. And I understand that uh, ring twice get one point because it's better than nothing. To, to have a, 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 a lot of uh, internal of good internal policies. But the one point of a ring of take it easy is certainly not the same as the one point at wing twice. Uh, uh, you could not say both platform are, 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 are giving a fair pay or at least the same kind of fairness in the pay. That's, uh, uh, that's totally irrelevant and, 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 and even deceiving because about by uh, take it easy, uh, you have naturally the minimum wage, but you have also uh, uh, um, because uh, there are employees, you have automatically you have uh, uh, paid holidays, you have automatically uh, sick leave paid, and so on and so on. It's it's not the case by 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 ring twice. Uh, ring twice have, as a uh, own policy, they want to respect the minimum wage, but it's it's purely a own policy. It's not uh, legally binding. Uh, the, the, the day they decide not to do it uh, or, or to make exception, they, they, they can and they do. Um, so, okay, I, I just 
want to terminate with uh, saying uh, there is al always the risk of uh, whitewashing by platform companies. Um, maybe like they, uh, they, 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 they say they are doing something, but um, okay. And we give them credit for, but uh, but 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 on no, not really. Uh, when when I say whitewashing, uh, just taking my my previous example, if you have now a ring twice saying, okay, we pay even uh, even good as good as a ticket easy, well, that's whitewashing. That's not true. Um, and personally, I, I I wanted also to stress uh, the importance of social social security. Uh, in your rating, it's only one point on ten. Uh, I, I, personally, I, I think it's too low uh, because, uh, um, okay, uh, uh, social security is very important for every worker and uh, the possibility a platform is, uh, is, is ev evading completely uh, the social security. For instance, in Belgium, using the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, system, that's very dramatic for, for the workers. But okay, that's that are my comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Martin, for your, uh, you know, uh, uh, insightful and also critical comments as well. Uh, absolutely. I see the point of no equality, <laughs> equal e equivalence. The one is not the same one, uh, absolutely. And the risk remains and the, there is the issue of the kind of, as you said, pointed the social security aspect, which is very important um, as well. Um, I would perhaps like to pass over to Anna. Uh, if, uh, you know, uh, Anna, could you perhaps reply also to the question, what, what is your take home message? And what, what are your reflections based on the report? Yes, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. It's uh, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, for inviting me here. It's really a pleasure uh, to be here. I, I really at the beginning, I would like to underline that I'm super happy that, you know, Fair Work uh, now is in Belgium, that you are doing it for the first time uh, in Belgium. We know uh, what a great impact this can have uh, in, in uh, different countries where it is done. So it's really a very, very welcome development that this has been done and that it's going to continue uh, in the next uh, uh, years. Secondly, I, I have to say that I was uh, quite surprised by the overall low uh, scores uh, for, for the platforms in, in your ranking. Uh, in a country like Belgium with very strong uh, labor protections, with very good uh, social security, to have platforms that score zero or, or one is still uh, yeah, quite, uh, quite something no? and shows that there is really indeed a, a lot still to, to be done. Uh, to improve the, the working conditions uh, uh, of platform uh, workers. Uh, another reflection, of course, is that uh, indeed, as it shows, no, even in the same sector, there can be a big variety of working conditions. Uh, the business models vary a lot, and the way that you know the uh, working conditions of, of workers are uh, shaped by you know the mix of you know uh, the guaranteed, not guaranteed uh, conditions, uh, um, the different uh, benefits that that uh, platform workers have access to or not, has a huge impact uh, on on uh, how how work is uh, shaped. Uh, Another reflection I would have is uh, indeed that uh, what, what your ranking confirms is the importance of looking beyond the most visible platform work. So not just the riders uh, and the transport, but also uh, those uh, platforms that are active in, in a, a less visible settings like the domestic work, like the care work. Um, on, uh, it's clear now that, that in, in these sectors as well, there is a, a big scope of, of uh, precariousness uh, uh, in uh, how the workers are, are done. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the public opinion is a bit maybe less informed of this. I wonder, you know, sometimes maybe people don't even realize that these are platforms, you know, uh, the, the companies uh, through which they find their babysitters and so on. Uh, so I think that is important. I think it would be also would have been also interested to uh, interesting to have at least one platform that does uh, work fully online, you know, um, uh, like micro task platform or, or something like that to, to just have a comparison um, that I found a little bit missing uh, in, in your ranking. Um, then uh, just two other small points. One is on uh, the lack of transparency in platform work. You said yourself that uh, there is issues with uh, availability of data. Uh, on a very kind of more general point uh, about assessing the, the platform work in Belgium, but I imagine also about the individual platforms. It takes a lot of effort you know, to, to uh, collect all this information that you uh, manage to get to, and sometimes you just you know, do not uh, give a point just because there's no data available. We have seen the same when we were doing you know, impact assessment to underpin our uh, proposal on platform work. Uh, this is really something that, that should uh, also improve. 
And, and uh, then also, as uh, also Martin uh, commented, uh, I also read in the report that some of the platforms uh, engaged with you a bit uh, already. They uh, um, listen to the feedback. They are looking with you for solutions. I think this is really very important. And I, I would hope that this continues. And as you, you know, settle down in, in Belgium and you do the, these reviews year by year, hopefully this is going to uh, happen more and more. So thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much, Anna. Yeah, just one one little point about the crowd work. I mean, uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. One of the well, you do know that we are also covering crowd work in our research broadly, broadly speaking. Um, of course, here the focus was really on you know on location platforms, but fair network and there perhaps Alessio could say a bit more if uh, he wish. Uh, has also attention and pays attention also to crowd work. And I think there has been also a study uh, on crowd work, which I think has been finalized within the, the FAIR network. So, you know, there might be possibilities there to include Belgium as well at a certain point. Although this platform, you know, they are also very much globally operating and uh, like Upwork or whatsoever. So it's completely different scenarios. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your for your remarks. Uh, I would move perhaps uh, to to um, uh, to court. I don't know whether the court, would you like to also follow up shortly? Yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, my main takeaway from this uh, report is that the approaches of this report is promising. Uh, is a promising one for better regulating the platform economy. Um, for me, it looks like a naming and shaming policy as a fruitful strategy, as it has already produced some positive results as reported by the report, uh, at least for some platforms. Uh, of course, at the same time, naming and shaming could, not only be, could only be a supplementary strategy and should not substitute for regulation, although it can positively influence better regulation and also the need for enforcement of existing regulation. Um, I also like the fact that the report makes the connection with the conventional economy where similar employment practices in some industries are on the rise. Um, at the same time, the findings are, are for, for, for Belgium surprising and unsurprising. Unsurprising as the fi findings are much in line with, one, with what you could expect from the platforms as many of them do not consider themselves as an employer. At the same time, as Anna has said, I think the, the results are also a bit surprising. Uh, one would expect that the results would be better in a country like Belgium with, uh, well -established in the, with a well-established industrial relations system and relative strong unions. And I think the report clearly demonstrates that there is a lack of contravening power at the workplace and uh, beyond. And I think in both cases, the upcoming regulation might change uh, this picture. Uh, the report shows that there are two platforms that are doing it quite well. One is, in fact, not rooted in the platform economy, the takeaway, and the other one is a more home-based platform. This is Ring Twice. Maybe that's not a coincidence, although for different reasons. Um, so for takeaway, it's not rooted in the platform economy, and it's even not a licensed uh, platform. And for uh, Ring Twice, it's a home-based platform, which might make it a bit more responsive, and it might be also provide it might be also a, a stronger leverage for unions or policymakers, at least in an ideal ideal world. Um, I think the example of Ring Twice shows three possible effects of platforms. First of all, a formalization of informal work, and here I can refer to babysitting. Uh, but I'm also wondering what are the motives of motives of, for instance, uh, those workers that are doing ba babysitting, are the conditions better uh, if they go along with the platform work uh, than compared to informal arrangements. A second effect is that there is also an informalization of formal work, and this is promoted by the legislature as it concerns the P2P st uh, status in Belgium. That implies that social security contributions for employees are lowered and income tax is also lowered. Um, that's also the point that uh, Martin was making. And then a third effect is that in some instances, the, uh, there's a, a, an effect for the self, genuine self-employed workers because the uh, platform makes, enables them to expand uh, their market. 
I think the example of uh, ring device also begs some other questions. Uh, for instance, we know from food delivery platforms that they are hardly making any profit. I wonder if this is also the case for Ring Twice, especially as this platform is active in household uh, services. For me, it looks me it looks very easy to circumvent the platform after the contract between the worker and the client or customer has been established. Uh, therefore, I'm also wondering if the figure of 36 workers is an accurate one. How many of them have been actually active in the past months? And how could the business in general, how could the business model of Ring Twice be uh, sustainable? Um, I think in general, I would have expected a bit more background information on the platforms themselves in the report, and also how, how they have been selected as there are about 100 uh, licensed, more than 100 licensed platforms in Belgium. For instance, uh, why has Uber Eats not been selected? which is uh, considered even worse than the liberal by the trade unions if it concerns uh, employment practices. Um, and also what in general, what are the motives of the workers, uh, for instance, in the household service, um, which is uh, outside the, uh, the uh, platforms. And this is an industry that is uh, very well regulated in Belgium. So, why would workers go along with with uh, with the platform for this for cleaning? Um, at, and then uh, finally, I think the, the report could also might be better highlight that platform work is mostly not a stepping stone to other and better work. Um, it looks rather that the overall majority of those platform workers have a higher attachments to the labor market are trapped in precarious forms of uh, employment. Uh, I'll leave it here at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kurt. And uh, yeah, interesting question you pose as well. I also, of course, uh, invite Claudia and Milena to, to pop in, uh, you know, if you wish, eh? Claudia and Milena. I mean, just very quickly on two points you made for the selection of the platform. Uh, yeah, you, this is a, a, absolutely a, a crucial question. Well, first of all, um, you know, the selection was, uh, well, there was a criteria of selection which was a bit pragmatical in the sense that uh, it was fitting also the larger Respect Me project Project. And there we wanted, of course, to also shed light, as also Anna uh, suggested uh, previously, you know, also shed light on platforms which basically, you know, have not been investigated so far. So that's why we want, we had to make a choice. We couldn't do everything, of course. <laughs> we, wish, we wished we, we could, but we couldn't. Um, so we made a selection there. And so we wanted to, of course, but at the same time, also taking a bit of that sector, the transport, for example, where we know we do know that in Belgium, you know, this is a large portion as well of the uh, platform um, uh, population. And uh, yeah, interesting question you pose about why a worker should go through the platform uh, to, you know, provide services for cleaning or whatsoever. Uh, well, we have been posing this question ourselves. Uh, now, what I can say uh, is that generally speaking, sometimes, you know, the kind of uh, uh, how can I say? Well, certainly there is something in there which has a lot to do with informality of labor uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, the kind of groups you are dealing with. Um, uh, uh, now, I don't want to say something that then, you know, people can jump on, but of course there is a lot of informality out there and, uh, you know, which needs to be solved before, you know, uh, looking at um, how platform, in fact, recruits their own, their own workforce, uh, because, you know, having this kind of easy way to work can, in fact, rather than, you know, regulating and deregulate a system as well, when you have a workforce there that, you know, uh, is in very uh, difficult situations. On the other hand, also the bureaucratic system um, in Belgium seems to play quite interesting role and we can go in and discuss in further on that unfortunately we don't have much time um, but um, it seems also that there are a lot of those kind of social costs if you put in that way that people um, you know consider um, before in fact using um, certain services or deciding on um, via what kind of channel to um, provide their own services 
So that's uh, another thing that perhaps uh, could be uh, could be said here. But I don't want to keep a lot of time, and we will have time to dis for discussion later. I would like to give the floor to um, Mark Botenga um, for his uh, comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for the invitation um, and, and, and for the, the contributions. Of course, much has already been said, so I don't want to <laughs> repeat what, what was said. I, I was slightly, um, unfortunately, not that surprised uh, because in the framework of uh, the work we did on the directive here uh, in Parliament, also on the initiative report, we can talk about it later, uh, we have had quite some, some uh, interactions as well with workers giving us this kind of, uh, of feedback. So um, I, I wasn't too surprised, unfortunately, uh, although it, it does remain quite shocking. Um, I'm very happy uh, with the kind of approach because it does indeed, uh, someone said it before, allow to compare not only on the one hand, perhaps platforms internationally, so how they behave in different countries, but at the same time, how different platforms behave in, in, in one country. So uh, this to this extent could also be useful to push them a little bit in, in a name and shame approach to improve their practices. Um, but um, obviously, from, from my perspective, what needs to change is, is the law. There's a number of things that, that, that we need to regulate, and we can, we can talk about the directive later, the proposed directive at least. Um, so this is, this is, let's say, one or, or two, two things. Um, regarding the, the, the selection and the, the, um, the platforms chosen, uh, I would propose, personally, a, a massive increase in, in means and uh, um, and research funds to indeed extend this uh, kind of research uh, in order to, to, to broaden the scope, uh, perhaps not just the number of platforms, but also uh, perhaps refine a number of criteria. Uh, I think it, it was said before that, that of course, if, if you've got this approach, there's a number of nuances that you do not get. Um, perhaps also, I think on fair pay, there could be, uh, could be something done. So now it, it's for the, the way I understood it mostly unfortunately about the discussion if at least they can prove that they're ready to pay minimum wage uh, but of course our, our objective should not be that all of these workers get uh, get minimum wage you know it should be it should be way way above this uh, especially from a, a regulatory perspective so um, I think that there would be some some margin of um, of ref for to refine and to, to, to perhaps detail a little bit okay at, at what levels are we and that might also then uh, overcome the the the, the how would I say, the, the, the excessive uh, schematic uh, approach of, of, of it at, at times. Uh, but then again, the positive side of the fact that it is so schematic is that it makes it very easy to compare, you know, and it, it is something. And I would like to, to, to perhaps stress uh, one point, which I think is, is particularly relevant, um, that there is, a, you, you write it in the report, that there's an increasing tension between, let's say, the... the, the um, protected labor market, the regulated labor market, and then the, the platform one. I think this is extremely important, uh, at least from a, from a, a, a parliamentary perspective, um, to say, okay, what we are doing here is to see, you know, how are we, how is this labor market evolving and is it actually being used to destroy the classic uh, protections? So I think this would also to be uh, interesting to keep to keep in mind, and perhaps a last thing, which um, which is something that is is present throughout the report, is that obviously the the, the difficulties for for organizing, the difficulties for uh, creating um, the same kind of, of of balance of power or the same kind of, of force uh, for trade unions uh, within these the, this new uh, these new forms of work. Um, these are essential, and, and in this sense, first, I, I hope that your report can help because I think it is also very illuminating and, and, and it can help uh, to raise awareness as well uh, for, for workers and, and amongst workers. So in this sense, I think this kind of approach uh, can help. Uh, but it is also it's something that in, in the future, when, when we, we get an extended uh, budget for this kind of report, uh, which I'll repeat, um, I think it, it, it could be good to uh, to also see, okay, how can we influence, because in the end, what made in the, in the regular economy, what made the difference was the, the, the ability of uh, collective agreements, the ability of, 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 of having this counter power to the, 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 the power of management. So this is a little bit present in, in, in the, the fair management part you have, but I think this would be, would be an aspect as well to, to dig into and to, to develop, because I think this kind of approach has, has a lot of uh, potential 
to to facilitate and promote um, let's say um, uh, collective organization of, of, of workers so I'll leave it there for the moment and then we'll come back to the Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, I think we have enough also for the discussion for later. I like uh, also this links very much to the point also that Martin was making about the social security, the risk that workers they take now independently from the unemployment status. Okay, but the risk. And that's the question is very, very important. So, uh, and perhaps we can further discuss on that, um, um, but also in fact, how we can influence um, and how we can, how can we create awareness? Uh, that is a very important also message. Thank you very much. I would perhaps now, um, um, you know, kind of um, go with a second round of question, a bit more general, uh, but still very much attached to the report. Um, so what I would like to ask uh, to you is from your different perspective to draw some consideration uh, on, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, results of this report. And I would perhaps start perhaps with you, uh, um, uh, uh, Mark, um, about, you know, and we reverse the order. Um, again, what do you, how do you think that now and you were pointing at the end the issue of collective organizations uh, and the difficulty of organizing for these workers but also you mentioned and uh, the relevance of these uh, you know looking at a platform in their own um, cross-country uh, 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 dimensions um, so more european so what would you say that from a european perspective you know this report could in fact help in influencing and delivering um, for for the future, for improving the condition of workers. So, what kind of you know gaps, pitfalls you identify? What exists out there that you think you know really we could really use this report to move forward? Um, that, that's a good question, and it's. Um... To be honest, there's a lot of work still to be done. So we now have a first, uh, so maybe just to, to give you the background, the, the European Parliament came with a, a, an initiative report um, regarding the, this, um, the, the, the rights of platform workers. Uh, and in response, uh, we also had some exchanges with Commissioner Schmidt, Schmidt on this. Um, in, in reply, then the Commission indeed came with a, with a proposal. Uh, now, in this proposal, there's a number of things which I believe are positive um, in regard to the to the five criteria or the five the five measures you you use um, regarding, uh, for example, um, at least uh, the, the 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 contracts. Um, so the fact that there would now be um, or at least is proposed because, as you know, it's just a proposal and it's now being discussed in Parliament. It will go to the Council and so on. But um, the, the idea of the presumption of employment uh, could be uh, potentially very, very important. Uh, so the, 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 the presumption that these workers would be um, employed unless uh, the, the company could prove that it's enough um, could potentially be very good. Now, I'm, I'm very cautious on this. Why? Because obviously, first of all, it is for the moment uh, a rebuttable. So it can be rebutted uh, as, as a presumption. Um, and the conditions of how uh, it might be um, refused and, and rejected, uh, they're, they're, they're all to be defined. Uh, and so you can imagine, according to how you will um, uh, overcome, overthrow the, the presumption of employment, uh, if this is very easy, uh, you will come in a situation where basically uh, you'll have a presumption of employment but that is completely empty because there's such a big back door uh, that it's re it becomes really easy for either the platform uh, or, or, or even you know pushing the worker to say, well, you know, it's very clear that I'm uh, that I'm not employed, that I'm not in a, in a in, a, in an employment um, relationship with this with this platform, so it could this could potentially be a very good thing. So we fought for this, uh, but we need to look at at, at the conditions that are going uh, to be attached are going to be attached to this presumption of, of employment. Um, I'm 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 not uh, per se negative. I think it, it can have a, a very good um, impact, but we need to be very very careful. Uh, a second point regards. Um, I think, and this is this is the, the 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 biggest weakness for the moment. Not the biggest weakness, because I'm sure some others will find uh, will find others. But one of the the main uh, problems with the, the current proposal regards the transparency on the algorithm. 
So um, if we want to have a, a clear view and we want to, to, to actually know, you know, be it on, on, on the, 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 the management, be it on the way um, the, the, the system actually works, so your contract, um, your, uh, sorry, your study uh, puts out very clearly that, um, you know, it, it's based for the moment, the judgments of the courts are very much based on a case-to-case -case basis. Uh, but if we want to have something which is really factual, we need to get the algorithm. Now, there are some transparency provisions in the new directive, in the proposed directive. Uh, but in the end, uh, the way it's phrased for the moment, the main, um, you know, the main control will still stay with the company um, or with the, with the platform as such. Um, meaning that even if you get partial access, um, then the company can hide perhaps business secrets, trade secrets, and so on. Um, this will still uh, keep disproportionate power and advantage um, in the hands of, of, of the platform. So this is, uh, I think this will be a key, key battle um, because it will be part of, of, let's say, a number of the criteria you've seen on, on fair management, on fair contracts, on the way it actually functions. Without this, this, this access and, and in-depth understanding of the algorithm is going to be extremely, extremely difficult. Um, regarding wages, maybe to come back to that, uh, to wages, um, okay, on working conditions first, that would be, you know, obviously if you will get the, the, the presumption of employment, which would be effective and which would indeed be, you know, on the ground um, a reality, then of course that would make a big difference for the kind of conditions, uh, be it on, 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 on social security, potentially on uh, sick leave, on whatsoever. With this little uh, on security at work, you know that in, in, in normal companies um, there are committees of, of works control as well uh, for security and safety, for health and safety, and so on. So uh, to be seen how that would be organized uh, then. But um, these, how would I say, for for working conditions, that would definitely that has the potential to 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 be a step in the right direction. On wages, on the other hand, um, I'm afraid that this this directive will not make a huge difference. Um, and there is a big, uh, because we were speaking about collective bargaining, there is a big but. So the commission has taken this uh, habit of now speaking of work representatives. Uh, the problem of speaking uh, of workers' representatives is that that doesn't necessarily mean you're speaking about the recognized trade unions. Uh, this opens the door to the creation of, uh, you know, what, what sometimes in the US they call uh, yellow trade unions or uh, uh, there's another word for it to some um so this is this is so trade unions or, or worker organizations that are basically being pushed and being organized by by the platform and by the employers themselves rather than um so this is a, this is a risk um it's also not for the moment uh, guarantees on the fact that for example we have the collective agreements and so on that they would actually be respected so all of these things, uh, because we don't want to get into a situation where basically the only right uh, on, on pay that these workers would have would be related to minimum wage. You know, it is, it is of course, a scandal that many of them do not even have minimum wage, but the, the, the objective cannot be to, you know, let's, let's all get them to minimum wage. And in this sense, uh, there's a lot of work to be done, I think, to the, to the current wording and the current proposal of the European Commission in regard to, uh, to wages um, and to the, to, the, to the involvement of uh, trade unions. Because as you put it in your, um, in your study, the involvement of effective trade unions does you different. Uh, so if this is not guaranteed uh, in the in the directive in the final uh, outcome, uh, that's going to be it's going to be very problematic. There's in in the in the parliament a very clear, uh, rather clear uh, left wing right wing vision on that um, because of course everyone knows what the, the impact for workers of, of trade unions is, and so uh, people that are opposed to higher wages will not uh, or better wages will not um, how to say uh, will not necessarily support. This. Um, but this is going to be, be, to be honest, this is going to be one of the of main battles as well. Um, and then maybe there's, uh, I'm looking at the time, I don't want to go too far uh, over time. Um, regarding um, perhaps a last, uh, last part on, on the future, on how, how this is going to, to spell out. Um, there is a matter of the, the, for example, what happened in Brussels with Uber. 
and um, I'm sure some some other of my colleagues here today can, can explain that better. Where basically Uber was now legalized without having to respect the minimum standards of the the the, the, the cab sector, so the taxi sector. Um, so this is also I'm mean, going to be a, a debate which is going to be outside a little bit of the scope of the directive, um, but the general uh, rules of the sector. Um, if we're going towards arrangements like the Brussels government has now uh, taken for Uber, I'm afraid that that uh, is not going to stop a model of, of social dumping in certain platform uh, or by certain platforms. Uh, that's that's uh, that's going to be a challenge which is beyond the, the directive proposed by the Commission. The Commission cannot solve that by this directive, and and, and neither neither can we. Um, but it's going to be a point of attention anyway, aside from 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 how good or how uh, weak the, the directive is going to be. So I think there's a lot of potential in the directive uh, regarding um, an improvement, at least, of uh, conditions. I don't think uh, you write in the report that we should have fairer and better conditions and pay. I, I, I don't think I agree with that. I think we should have good and fair uh, conditions. Uh, not, you know, we should aim, uh, we should aim, aim high. Um, and I think we can do it, but there's, there's still a lot of work on, on, on the directive and on the text um, as it is currently. Um, but okay, that's why we're here. I think any mobilization, we had a number of mobilizations. Uh, I'm sure when Nicolas Schmidt, the commissioner, uh, met with the workers' representatives and trade unions on this uh, topic, uh, at least I may hope that it pushed him and it influenced him a little bit to uh, to come with uh, with a more ambitious proposal than he initially might have had in, in mind. So a lot of work to be done, but, um, but, but a lot of opportunities. And in this sense, um, if you, if, if we can use this um, this report in, in in the European Parliament debates, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a pleasure. I'll keep it to that. Obviously, I'm very open to any any questions you have. Yeah, thank you very much for the in-depth analysis. I will just take uh, one point you mentioned about this collective, uh, 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 you know, representation. What does it mean for trade unions, collective organization, platform workers? And I would like to just jump these to in you know to to court. Uh, also in the light of the fact that we see, so we move from Europe into uh, back uh, more the Belgium context, we see from our report we have a, a lot of differences across platform, platform are not the same, the own models matter, so you know, Kurt, could you perhaps elaborate a bit more from uh, your point of view, uh, being a researcher but also at the same time working for trade unions, how do you see the challenges for collective organization of workers in platform work? Okay, thank you for this question. Um, I think we see differences between, indeed, between platforms, and especially if we look then at the food delivery sector in Belgium. Um, for instance, there's a difference between takeaway and then the uh, more international platforms like uh, Uber Eats and Deliveroo. Um, for explaining this, I think we have to look at the roots of takeaway. Uh, which is rooted in the, first of all, in the conventional economy and first instances. Um, while the uh, other platforms, international food delivery platforms, are rooted in, for instance, Silicon uh, Valley. So Takeaway was already active in Belgium before the arrival of um, the international food delivery platforms and is working with careers and a genuine employment status, mostly, uh, although uh, so it's working with non-standard forms of employment. Um, I think uh, following Grasgam's law, one would expect that the bad employment practices of, uh, of Deliveroo and Uber, Uber Eats are driving out the good ones, like uh, in the case of Takeaway. Uh, but so far, this hasn't been the case. Um, and even though Takeaway uh, identify itself as a food delivery platform, it has not taken the opportunity to be licensed as a platform, thus not uh, profiting from the fact that uh, there was dedicated regulations for them and that they could go along, could go along with the P2P status. Um, but still, I think the, the question is how, uh, how long will this situation last? Um, to what extent will, will Takeaway be able to compete with the other international platforms? I think this, this will depend on a number of conditions and I identified uh, four of them. Uh, 
and those are all, more, all empirical questions. Uh, the first one is, what are the incentives of restaurants to work with a certain platform? Or do they take the slightly better working conditions of the careers into account when they work with takeaway? Is takeaway a more reliable partner for the restaurants? That's an empirical question. Um, second, I think it remains to be seen how the platforms will cope with the upcoming regulation. Um, will this regulation install the same level playing field for the industry and bring more stability? Um, of course, this new regulation will also depend on, on the state. Is there a willingness to enforce new regulation? Uh, I think recent attempts to enforce rules and for instance, the e-commerce look promising. Uh, and not only from a trade union perspective. And then fourth, there are the works themselves. There's the voice and exit behavior and loyalty from their careers. Um, so far, will careers stay with the bad platforms or turn massively to the good one? In this case, uh, takeaway. Or will they opt for bottom-up pressure and mobilization, uh, causing reputa reputational damage to the bad ones? Uh, I think this, this, those are all empirical questions. Um, I, I might think that both might happen at the same time, time voice and exit. Um, and this behavior might also depend on the composition of the workers attached to certain platforms. And some might still be loyal to, to the platforms despite the, uh, the bad working conditions. Um, and it would also be interesting to see, um, let's say in the coming months, if it, for instance, concerns careers on, with mopeds, uh, if there will be a rise of mobilization given the rise uh, of inflation, at least then, and uh, that's what we could expect from the uh, conventional economy where a uh, rise in infl inflation is usually um, associated with a, a rise in mobilization of workers. Um, what does this all imply for the collective organization of workers? Again, an empirical question. Um, it might be, I mean, if there are grievances, this, this not necessarily means that this go together uh, with, with a more collective organization as, as a number of other conditions should be met. Uh, for instance, I can refer to opportunity structures or for instance, also the, then the uh, demobilization efforts of, of the platform economy. Um, I think also, uh, when it concerns takeaway, um, it's also good to, to take in, in mind that this is uh, a platform with a better reputation in Belgium, uh, as shown by the report. And it might also be the case in a number of other or European countries. But I think this is not a, a general rule. Uh, I think in general, platforms act very much as multinational corporation. This is behaving good at home, but uh, adapting to the employment regulations and, and the host countries. So I, I leave it here. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much. I would like now to dedicate because we have a, yeah, we are running a bit late, but you know, just take a couple of minutes uh, going back to Europe. And uh, I take also one of the questions which is uh, raised by David Espinoza regarding you know the European directive. So the question to Anna is again, what what can the report uh, do? What do you kind of uh, uh, see in the report which can in fact uh, uh, help uh, you know addressing the issue uh, which are now on the table for the European directive and I think that uh, David Espinoza was also posing almost the same question what would you estimate to be the impact of the proposed directive on working conditions for platform workers uh, in the Belgian platform economy how would you compare with the current legal framework so Hannah I don't know whether you want like to Take yes. Those. Yeah. Yes, Thank of you. course. I, I, I will try not to take too much time because I'm, I'm really aware of the time, but just let me maybe go a little bit into the different points. Uh, first of all, I have to say that, not, that when we started very technical, you know, work on, on uh, digital labor platforms in the European Commission, that was some like three years ago. Let's remember that, you know, Mrs. Uh, President von der Leyen uh, called for uh, an improvement of working conditions uh, in platform work uh, at the beginning of her mandate. So it's been quite a while that we were looking at, at the, these topics. 
topics. And uh, there, you know, the fair work principles were also a part of the uh, of our inspiration. Um, later on, of course, you know, the, the own initiative uh, report of the parliament that uh, Mr. Botenka mentioned, that was a, a big boost and, and very welcome uh, um, uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, motivation also for us to, to uh, uh, come with a very concrete and very ambitious proposal at the level of the commission. But early on, you know, the principles of the fair work were, were very rele relevant for us. And and from that point of view, I, I have to say that, you know, I, I think that on all the points, all the, the five principles, there would be improvement based already on, on the proposal. So when we look at those, you know, the fair pay uh, question, uh, indeed, we expect and we would hope that a significant number of, of people working through platforms would be reclassified as workers uh, as a re result of the legal presumption, not all of them, because we recognize, just as fair work uh, principle do as well, that there is a place for genuine self-employment uh, in platform work. For those who would become uh, workers, they would have access, uh, they should have access to at least the minimum uh, wage, uh, hopefully also to the sectoral uh, minimum wages uh, in uh, different member states. They would would also have protections in terms of, uh, for example, working time and access to paid uh, leave. This is this, uh, you know, kind of social benefits you know, that you uh, are not really capturing in, in your ranking, but that are also very, very important. In turn, you know, for the uh, genuine self-employed uh, people, those uh, uh, who uh, who work as genuine self-employed, I would hope that uh, platforms also maybe look a bit at their, you know, terms and conditions, and uh, uh, see um, uh, that maybe these limitations as for the levels of pay. Uh, would uh, maybe not uh, should not be should not be continued and give the genuine self-employed the real autonomy in shaping their their earnings. Secondly, for the fair fair conditions, uh, those who would become um, reclassified as workers would have then access to all the occupational safety and health. Um, uh, protections. Platforms would need to uh, indeed look at the risks uh, that uh, their workers uh, have. They would need to do protective and preventive measures. So also there, uh, hopefully they would they would score uh, higher uh, as a result of, of those legal uh, obligations. Then on uh, the fair contracts, uh, indeed, uh, we uh, we are calling uh, in uh, the proposal for the directive that both workers and also the self-employed who are working through platforms would be duly informed uh, about the use of uh, automated systems, so the use of the algorithmic management uh, in the supervision, monitoring, evaluation of, of platform work. They would need to be informed what kind of decisions are taken uh, or supported by automated systems, what kind of parameters are used um, uh, for for uh, these decisions. It is true that we are not asking for a full um, kind of showing of, of the algorithms. We also think that that technically would be very difficult for both for platforms uh, to, to give and for workers maybe to you know fully fully comprehend what matters is you know how the decisions are made so that uh, workers have uh, have a better idea on that and that leads me to the fair management principle we are also trying there to uh, give an obligation to platforms not just to give this information at start but to give individual explanations of decisions that are uh, made and that affect uh, significantly working conditions platforms would be obliged to have a contact person um, that uh, would be available to dis discuss those decisions and also uh, they would have to put in place a process to review and re to remedy uh, decisions that affect workers. I think that, you know, compared to what we see now in, in your ranking would be also a very big and very significant uh, improvement. And last but not least, on the fair representations, there also would be something that, you know, hopefully would prevent the situation like now where none of the platforms uh, scored any point on this. We would oblige the platform platforms to create channels for communication uh, between the, the workers. This is very important so that they could at least get in touch with each other uh, and start, you know, maybe some efforts towards uh, organization. And also for those who would be then classified as workers, we would uh, make this obligation for the platforms to put uh, the algorithmic management tools on the table for the social dialogue uh, and, and uh, for, for information, collective information and consultation. We should also remember that together with the proposal for the directive, the Commission presented draft guidelines on uh, the application of competition law. Uh, this, uh, these draft guidelines would aim to uh, uh, ensure that those who are genuine self-employed in platform work would be able to engage in collective uh, bargaining without uh, fear of uh, negative uh, um, repercussions under the competition uh, laws. So we hope that indeed, you know, there would be uh, 
already on the basis of the proposal of big improvements. Of course, now this is in the hands of the co-legislators, the parliament, the council, so we hope for a lot of improvements and even better protections. We also hope that the process is going to be uh, as quick as possible so that we do not have to wait uh, a very long time uh, for this directive to, to be um, uh, put in uh, national law. Uh, let's remember that there is you know, two years transposition uh, from the moment when, when it enters into force and before that we still have a lot of negotiations uh, to uh, to take place so that's where what i see as, as kind of the, the possible improvements from the from the proposal i would maybe just want want to make one tiny little point still i think where you no know, we are complementary uh, with with what you do as, as fair work uh, and we, what we cannot you know tackle in the in the legal text is the awareness raising, um, especially for the consumers, you know, I think uh, you there have a big role to play that people understand, you know, that there is no free ride uh, with platforms that if you have low cost, this cost is often, you know, borne by the workers. And uh, there's also power in, in the consumers uh, choices to, to influence uh, the, the working conditions and platforms. So that's all for me. Sorry for taking uh, maybe a bit too much time. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, absolutely. And I would like to give the floor now uh, to Martin. Um, we are talking about legislation and Martin, we also pointed to this uh, labor deal in Belgium. Um, how do you see the situation with the labor deal? I mean, uh, and again, how do you see this uh, report in any case uh, could you know, be of help for addressing some of the issues? that are there at stake in the labor deal in Belgium. The floor is yours. Thanks. Well, the <clears throat> labor deal was a, a huge uh, disappointment. Um, contrary to what was uh, announced and what the intention of the government was, so uh, to improve the working condition of the platform workers, uh, we consider it now uh, what's on the table, not the intention of the minister, because uh, I, I think he came with a good intention, but uh, after the discussion, it's what it was emptied. So we consider it now as an empty shell. Uh, why? Because first, uh, there is uh, not at all any questioning of the peer-to-peer the -peer situation. I don't use the, 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 the word status. Peer-to-peer -peer is not a status. It's not a working status. You don't have any social security. Uh, it, it's just a, a, a situation. There is no questioning um, about this. Um, among the intention, uh, there was uh, extending the, the insurance, the, the law insurance uh, on uh, uh, labor incidents to all platform workers. Um, but finally, it, it, it won't cover the, 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 the workers in peer-to-peer, -peer, only the workers uh, self-employed. And as you uh, yourself said, in, in, in the big platform, uh, 80 to 85 percent of the workers are in peer-to-peer -peer situation. So they won't be covered for any accident. That's a, that's a huge disappointment. And second, um, there is this concept of presumption of, uh, emplo uh, of uh, employee, but um, it seems we, we don't uh, understand the world the same way. For me, a presumption of employment, it's exactly as uh, Mark uh, said, uh, um, uh, said, just said, it means that you are an employee unless the platform proves before you begin to work, proves that in, your, in, in this situation, you are not an employee. And, uh, and, and so to, to stop with the current situation where in fact, most of the platform workers are uh, declared as uh, not uh, employees or uh, self-employed or a peer-to-peer. -peer, and it's up to them to go to court just to, to have the rights they deserve. And uh, this project won't change uh, this logic. So, um, you spoke about the eight criteria. Um, okay, maybe there are criteria. Uh, for most of the platforms in the transport sector, uh, most of the platforms are in the transport sector and there were already criteria uh, uh, for, for this. And But the, the project doesn't change uh, anything about the, the weight of those criteria uh, considered to the, to the main principles. So um, what, we, what we had, 
in December with this very bad judgment that you had a presumption for transportation of salary uh, work, but at the end, the, the judge said, no, at the end, uh, they, they could stay self-employed. It will be with this new law exactly the same. So, um, well, it's disembodying. And for me, it's a, a good example of what uh, should not be done at European level. Um, it's not clear at the moment what naturally or, 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 or what, what the, the European directive will become, but uh, certainly what they did of it in Belgium is a bad example, an example you should not follow. So um, uh, maybe maybe that, that could help the, 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 the parliament people in, at, at the European level just to, to have this bad example to, to, to see how it could uh, become, in fact, an empty shell. And I, I really hope it won't be the case at European level. Now, uh, this uh, labor deal is not voted yet in Belgium. So uh, I also hope there, there will be a reaction of the par parliament in Belgium to say, hey, uh, what's on the table is, is, ne is not what, what was announced. So uh, uh, please, uh, um, you should better it, but, uh, but we will see. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, you closed with a very interesting point, and I don't know whether we might take one, two minutes more. I look also at uh, Pablo and uh, whether we could. I think it, the point you raised about this presumption of the proof or whatsoever in the Belgium case um, is very interesting. I just wanted to, you know, take advantage of the fact we have both Marta Botenga and Anna here uh, to whether they want to kind of uh, uh, reply to your point uh, from a Belgian perspective regarding this issue, which is part of the European directive. Anna or Mark, do you want to just very shortly? We don't. We are already over the time, but perhaps one two minutes. I will just say one sentence. I I, I very much take the point Martin uh, just made. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's try to avoid the bad example from Belgium uh, at the European level. Unfortunately, the battle here will be the same uh, with political forces and so on. So uh, all kind of uh, input and uh, and support we can have, because in the end, what makes a difference is the pressure we were able to put on uh, on the different members of parliament in order to make them vote something something decent. Let's put it that way. So Thank you, Mark. I don't know whether Anna wants to. Yeah, Anna, please go. Yeah, I think you know we could we could spend another seminar now talking about you know how the uh, rebuttal presumption uh, could work in practice, how it would be implemented. I can tell you know that now in the council we are discussing it in a, a lot of detail actually. Uh, I think uh, the, the intention is there, the understanding is there that we uh, have a lot of you know misclassified people. Uh, we on the commission side we try to put in place you know uh, a proposal that that uh, can uh, address this uh, and then there is uh, of course the role for the member states a bit to see how uh, it can be implemented uh, for for the parliamentarians as well to uh, um, run the different tests and you know kind of case studies on how it can be implemented of course you know the experience of member states uh, like belgium like spain as well uh, is going to be uh, very useful in this process and uh, yeah, uh, if there is a better solution on the table, uh, I, I think all the sides should be open to listen and uh, to come up with something that, that is really effective and, uh, um, and brings good results, while at the same time, you know, allowing uh, those digital labor platforms to, uh, to develop, develop in a fair and, and sustainable way, way uh, and, and continue to, to provide opportunities for, for people to work. But again, in such a way that is respectful of, of, of the rights. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Uh, I think, yeah, the time is, is over. Um, well, I, I saw there were questions. I tried to insert some of the questions in the debates. Um, and some, you know, have been answered uh, directly by myself um, via online. I see on the chat now there are no other questions. But I just um, ask now to the people who are attending whether they want to pose any very short question. Now is the time. 
I don't see anybody raising hands or, you know, doing anything. So that means that uh, everything perhaps uh, went smoothly or, you know, people just uh, are a bit uh, kind of thinking uh, still. Uh, but I would like really to thank very much all the panelists. Uh, it was really a pleasure and we are very grateful that you have been with us today. It is a very important uh, moment for us. Um, I look particularly at Claudio Milena, we've been really uh, investing a lot in this report and I want also to thank them openly here today for the work that they have been do doing and also I would like to thank uh, particularly FAIR, uh, Alessio Bertolini and uh, Pablo Mark Graham who is the coordinator of the FAIR uh, project um, I really would like to thank them to have given to us also the opportunity here in Belgium to be able to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, network. So I thank you very much and uh, perhaps we will be meeting sometimes in conferences or in different other uh, webinars. Thank you very much.